So now that I've spoken about the interface, I'm going to briefly talk about how to generate the pressure. So, so one can use a constant flow system, and the most simplest one is a water seal system that utilizes threshold resistor principles where the pressure is determined by the force applied to the surface area and generated pressure is independent of the flow. Bubble CPAP systems such as fischer pekal Babi Plus, Airway Development, homemade systems are most commonly used. Another form of constant flow system is the flow opposition with a variable threshold resistor valve. This is what we do with the ventilator CPAP. Here the patient expiratory flow opposes a constant flow from the nasal prong and generates the CPAP. In contrast, the variable flow system, there is a flow opposition with fluidic flow reversal during, inspiration, uh, during expiration, where the gas is entrained during inspiration to maintain stable pressures. And in expiration, the expiratory flow is diverted via a separate fluidic flip fall flip-flop valve. The Arabella generator and the infant flow driver are typical examples of this system. And to illustrate that further, in the variable flow infant, <clears throat> infant flow driver, during inspiration, the flow is converted to pressure. It reduces the work of breathing and maximizes the pressure stability at the nasal interface. However, during expiration, the flow is flipped away from the nasal prongs to the expiratory tube, thus the residual gas pressure provided by the continuous gas flow creates a stable CPAP pressure during the whole respiratory cycle. It makes sense. However, limited randomized and non-randomized clinical studies in preterm infants comparing the infant flow nasal system and the simple single prong system have found no significant differences in short-term or long-term outcomes in physiological variables. So having talked about the three components of the CPAP system, I'm going to move more towards creating a basis for benefits of bubble CPAP system as a preferred method to deliver positive airway pressure. Um, this is illustrated very nicely by Jane Pillow and her group who demonstrated that the bubble CPAP system enhances lung volume and gas exchange in preterms much better. What they did, they intubated preterm lambs of 133 day gestation. Uh, the term gestation in sheep is about 152 days. And then randomized them to bubble CPAP of eight or 12 liters per minute flow or constant pressure CPAP via the ventilator circuit. And what they showed was the animals treated with bubble CPAP shown here in solid rectangles had enhanced ventilation by having a better pH and lower PCO2 compared to constant pressure CPAP shown here in open circles. Further, bubble CPAP animals also demonstrated improved oxygenation and enhanced oxygen extraction compared to the constant pressure system. In their study, they were not able to show any differences between eight or 12 liters flow. So what could be the reasons or physiological explanation for improved performance on bubble CPAP? I think the more efficient utilization of inspired oxygen in the bubble CPAP group is very suggestive of increased airway patency. The promotion of airway opening events likely explains the short-term improvement in respiratory physiology. Lung volume recruitment and surfactant secretion may be improved with, by superimposing the stochastic resonance effect from the variable pressure oscillation associated with water seal bubble CPAP on the underlying sub-threshold biological breathing pattern. <clears throat> How about the effectiveness of bubble CPAP during the post-extubation period? Gupta and colleagues randomized 140 infants to to, of 24 to 29 week gestation to infant flow driver CPAP and or bubble CPAP in the post extubation period. The primary outcome was successful extubation at least at 72 hours. And as you can see, the proportion of infants in both the groups who achieved successful extubation 
for 72 hours was very similar. However, if you look at the median duration of CPAP support in infants ventilated for less than 14 days, it was 50% shorter in infants which were on bubble CPAP. So bubble CPAP could, has the potential of being effective in the acute phase of the disease and also during um, when the babies are recovering and are being weaned off the respiratory support. So the next question is, are all bubble CPAP devices created same way? I think Poli and colleagues recently reported a study comparing um, volume oscillations delivered um, to a lung model using four different CPAP system. The homemade system, the fischer pekal system, the Bobby Plus system and airway development system. And what <clears throat> they looked at was the magnitude of lung volume oscillations as a result of bias flow. You can see the fischer pekal system shown here in black provided the greatest magnitude of lung volume oscillation than compared to any other devices at all of the bias flows. The magnitude of lung volume oscillation increased at bias flow above four in three systems, the fischer pekal the homemade, and the airway development. And in contrast, uh, the um, Bobby Plus system uh, at flows higher than four, there was a decrease in the oscillation. So one of the reasons is the airway development and Bobby Plus system utilize a diffuser in their bottle. And that diffuser attenuates the oscillations and decreases the interaction between the air and water. So it seems from this, their data, the fischer pekal and the homemade system um, perform much better. In addition, if you look at flow rates over eight liters per minute, the homemade and the fischer pekal system generate second bandwidth frequencies at 54 to 76 hertz and 61 to 71 hertz respectively that may promote enhanced lung recruitment, especially in an